welcome to Trendside Online. It's good for us to take some intentional time this morning to praise our great God. Psalm 100 instructs us to shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. And when we do this, we are reminded of who God is, who we are, and that we, we rely on him for our everything. And life can seem out of control these days, like you are being tossed on the rough sea of life. In the midst of the turmoil, we need to look to the lighthouse. And if you've ever been to the shore of an ocean or the sea or a large lake, you've likely seen a lighthouse that stands there as a beacon in the midst of the waves and fog. Now, not every lighthouse is still as integral as they once were uh, with the advent of GPS and radar. And yet they still send out a beam of light reminding those on the water that there is a safe place nearby. Jesus said that he was the light of the world. So, like the sailor on the sea, we can look to Jesus not only in our time of need, but always. His light shines in the darkness and we can rest knowing that he can bring us safe to shore. Now, would you do me a favor? Would you crank the volume and sing with all you have? Sing for joy, even if it is just a joyful noise. Let us be reminded of my lighthouse. In my wrestling, in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. You are the peace in my troubled sea In the silence you won't let go In the questions your truth will hold Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Oh, You are the peace in my troubled sea
from wherever you've been Come broken hearted, let rescue begin Come find your mercy, O oh sinner come near Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal this time to pray and to continue to pray. And in just a moment, that is exactly what we will do. However, before we go to prayer, it goes without saying that this COVID-19 virus in differing ways affects us all, some to a greater and some to a lesser extent. Sadly, we cannot even begin to acknowledge all the ways this virus and time of isolation has impacted all those who are part of our Trendside community. However, this morning we do want to highlight one of our families and how dramatically their life has changed over these last six to seven weeks because of this virus. Before we go to prayer, please watch and listen to the Wyatt's family story.
How do I feel in this moment about the coronavirus? Not great. To be completely honest, I'm really struggling. I'm struggling to stay positive, and I'm struggling to know what the right decisions are moving forward. I desperately want something, anything, to go back to the way it was, because right now, I want familiarity. That's how I feel in the moment. But when I reflect back over the past six weeks, when I reflect further back over the last few months, when I look back even further over the past five years, and when I reflect over my whole life, I begin to smile. I begin to feel a calm assurance. I begin to feel peace. Because I see how God has always been there. How he has worked out my life for good, even in the most difficult days. I see what he has done. I see how he has changed me. And I see that he has got me through the darkest of days because nights always turn into a new day. Nothing on earth is forever, but God is forever and his promises are forever. He is good to me all the time. Even when I slide away into my own feelings, into my own despair and away from him, he is good to me. It is only when I turn my eyes back to him that things seem manageable again. He never changes. His words are always true. How has my life changed since the coronavirus? I may be separated from my family. I may be separated from the people I love the most. I may be detached from what is familiar and safe. I may see things that are difficult to see and I may experience things that are difficult to handle. But where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. Where can I put my trust? I will trust in the Lord with all my heart. Working as a nurse on the COVID unit at the hospital has been very hard. It required me to give up a lot. It made me scared and anxious. There were lots of times I felt helpless and alone, and I had to get real and right with God. After all, I might make my plans, but God determines my steps. He places us where we need to be. Life for our family has changed a lot, just as it has for yours. None of us chose to be in this situation, and none of us knows how it will end. But can I leave you with the truth about that? A promise that God has made to us? I hope it will encourage you. I hope it will bring you peace and assurance. In Isaiah 41, 13, we read, For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Will you join me now in prayer? Merciful Father, we come to you today praying for mercy, praying for grace, and praying for strength. Lord, we have just heard a little of how this virus is impacting one of our own families, and our hearts are both saddened by the sacrifices and challenges ones like the Wyatts are enduring. Yet we are also extremely grateful for the vital work they do, how their sacrifice is helping provide the needed care for others. Your word reminds us that we are to stand firm, to not let anything move us, to always give ourselves to the work of the Lord, because we know our labor in the Lord is not in vain. Lord, we pray this truth, this encouragement over the Wyatt family at this time. Continue to sustain them, watch over them, and protect them. Even as this one family is in forced separation, may you use this time apart to even knit them closer together and closer to you. Lord, we also acknowledge this is just one of many similar stories. There are so many among us who in their own work and lives face similar challenges. There are those who go to work risking their own health and their own safety in order to continue to serve our communities. There are so many who are separated from their loved ones, longing to give an embrace, longing to once again share life together. 
There are many who have lost employment or face the uncertainty of whether there will be work and a livable, livable income to return to. Lord, for all who are struggling, for all who are feeling the uncertainty of these times, please grant them your mercy, your grace, and your strength. And Lord, as we continue to seek your mercy, we have also been reminded in a shocking way the world is still infected by a virus far more deadly and far more harmful than COVID-19. Lord, as it was not COVID-19 that senselessly took over 20 lives from small communities in northern Nova Scotia. Rather, it was the reckless wickedness of man. So Lord, we pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for these grieving communities. Again, on their behalf, we plead for your mercy, your grace, and your strength. Finally, as we find ourselves in these uncertain times, may we not be given to despair, but may we trust all the more in you. May we stop leaning on our own understandings, but in all of our ways, acknowledge you to direct our paths. May we hold on to the promises we just read, that you are our God. You are the one who takes hold of our hands and comforts us, reminds us not to be afraid, for you are our help. And Lord, even though we are wearied and tired, it is you who promises us that when our hope is placed in you, you will be the one who will renew our fading strength. But you will not just renew it, you will cause it to soar on wings like eagles. So because of all of this, Lord, we come to you alone for mercy, grace, and strength. And we pray this in the mercy of the Father, in the amazing grace of the Son, and in the strength provided by your Holy Spirit. Amen. In just a moment, Pastor Matt is going to wrap up our series on Isaiah chapter 40. However, just before he shares with us, we're going to listen to a song, a song that helps summarize this incredible chapter from God's Word. And I'm especially delighted to introduce it because it was written by a family member, my cousin Steve Bell, not to be confused with my father, Pastor Steve Bell. And this may just be my favorite of all of his songs that he has written. Now, this version is not actually performed by my cousin Steve, but this version does have the lyrics included, and it is performed by a family friend named John Buller. Enjoy, and may you find comfort in the promises of Scripture. you know? Have you not heard? Has it been told you from the first? Have you not understood? From the forming of the earth, he sits enthroned above the world and spreads the heavens like a tent, a place for us to live in, a place for all to live. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? Has marked off the heavens with the breath of his word, do you know? Come for my people, come for my people, says the Lord. He brought out Starry host, and one by one he called them by name. Why do you still complain that he doesn't know your ways? Lift your eyes and look to see who created all. Nevermore complain mm, That he doesn't know your ways yeah. Who has measured the waters In the hollow of his hand Do you know? Do you know? Who has marked off the heavens 
With the breath of his word Do you know Do you know Come forth My people Come forth My people Says the Lord yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Says the Lord. Do you know you not heard? Has it been told you from the first? Have you not understood? From the forming of the earth, I lift my eyes and look to see that you created all of these. And I will not complain Cause I know you know my name yeah. Good morning. It is good to be with you wherever you are watching this morning. I'm excited to talk with you about our passage today. But before we get into that, I want to talk to you about Popeye. Popeye, you ask? Yes, Popeye the Sailor Man. Many of you uh, know who Popeye is, and if you don't, you're probably a lot younger than I am. He was a cartoon sailor that often needed a quick a bit of strength to fight Bluto and save his damsel in distress, Olive, or to tackle a job that needed to be done. And so he would squeeze a can of spinach into his mouth and his strength would grow quickly and he would be able to save the day or just get the job done. You see, what spinach did for Popeye physically is what God can do for us physically and spiritually. Now I need to include a disclaimer here. Because the Lord is the source of supernatural power doesn't mean there's always an instantaneous reaction in us like Popeye after eating his can of spinach. It can be more gradual. In our lives, we need God's strength to tackle the challenges, the obstacles of life, the pandemics, as well as the everyday things. And this morning, we are finishing our look at Isaiah chapter 40 and what it teaches us. I do love this chapter, and I hope that you have grown to love it too as we've been studying it together. This morning, let's see how we can get our spinach, our strength from God. First, we must remember that God is the source of strength. Would you look at verses 27 and 28 with me of chapter 40? Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. We may have doubts. And verse 27 reminds us of this. As we've been studying this chapter, we have learned how the book of Isaiah is divided into two parts. The first 39 chapters of Isaiah deal with judgment upon the nation for their indifference to God and His Word. And then in chapter 40 and on, Isaiah proclaims comfort to the people of God. Isaiah speaks of forgiveness and deliverance. He views God's people as on the eve of their restoration. 
The Israelites were frustrated because God hadn't rescued them yet. They were doubting that God cared anymore and wasn't going to help them. You and I, we can feel that way too sometimes. Or in days like we're living with this virus, we can doubt if God is there and is he still in control. We can also think it's this especially if we're, we've disobeyed God or done wrong or sinned and we've asked for help and it hasn't arrived. But there is no need to doubt. A few weeks ago, we saw in our chapter how it started off declaring comfort for God's people. In verse 1 of chapter 40, it says, Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. As we read on, we see how God will provide comfort for his people. His care and concern over our well-being is a comfort for us. His power, ability, and strength are a comfort to us. God's giving of these things to us when we are weak and weary is a great comfort and a blessing to us. Everything that matters in life hangs on who God is. Isaiah in this verse points to four things for us. First, that God is eternal. He is everlasting. You and I are often uh, narrow focused. We focus on the right now. Scripture shows us that God is not confined to time. God has always been there. He is here now and will always be here. Secondly, God is a creator of everything to the very ends of the earth. There is not a single square inch on this earth or in our galaxy that is unknown to God or beyond his reach. Anywhere life may take us, whether Babylonian exile, a lonely home, an intensive care unit, God is already there with us. We can rest in his grace and power at all times, everywhere. And thirdly, God is always at work. We tire daily. We need nourishment and rest every day. We spend about a third of our lives asleep in bed, recouping our strength. God does not need restoration. He is an eternal, boundless source of strength and energy. He always has been and always will be working his purposes out in his own way, in his own time. And then fourthly, God is wise and his understanding is unsearchable. We as finite beings can't claim to know the infinite mind of God. And we shouldn't think that we know what's right and best. We have a limited view and a limited capacity for analyzing and problem solving. Who are we to think we should dictate how things should happen to an all-knowing, all-powerful God. He is the creator, not us. God knows what he's doing. It's impossible for us to fully understand God, but we need to submit to him by faith. We can always know God is always here, always at work, always wise. God shares his strength with us in our, in our weakness. The second thing we see in our passage today is that God gives us his strength. Let's continue reading verse 29 to 31. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Strength to the weary. Since God is the source. He is the only one who can give us strength. And the fact is that we all get weary and weak. We, when we recognize that, when we acknowledge that God is the one who can help us, and we ask for help, then God will strengthen and empower us. I'm reminded of Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. It says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lonely in heart, and, if you, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come to me, Jesus says. Jesus is the one who can ease our burdens and release our stress. Rest for your souls. Jesus isn't just speaking to being weary and burdened physically, but also spiritually. When we are weary physically, we need physical rest and rejuvenation. But when we are weary spiritually, we need spiritual rest and rejuvenation. Before we come to Christ and accept him as our savior, our souls are in a place of unrest. There is no peace. Uh, within the sinful nature, there is worry, fear, doubt. 
Within the sinful nature, there is discontent, a, a lack of fulfillment, a void. And if this is where you are right now, you can come to Jesus. He came and died for you, for your sin, your wrongdoings, so that you can be free of sin, so you can know true peace and joy. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Make Jesus Lord of your life. Even after we come to Christ, we can struggle from time to time. We will have times where we need rest. And this is when we can find a quiet place and study scripture, pray. Jesus would often go off by himself to spend time with God the Father. If it was important for Jesus himself to get away once in a while, who are we to think that we can get by without it? When we are emotionally or psychologically or spiritually weary, it can physically wear us out. And it's important to know that Jesus is the one who can give us what we need. In verse 30, we read of an unexpected weariness. Even the young people, the ones who have the most energy, get weary. The ones who are strong and vibrant stumble and fall. It shows us that everyone is human and subject to becoming weak. No matter how strong you are, how fit you are, how smart you are, how capable you are, you are only able to do and take on so much. We all have human limitations. This shows that any of us can wear down. Our human strength can only take us so far and our human strength can only accomplish so much. And it's true from a spiritual perspective too. The ones who are spiritually mature at times get weary. Even those who are stable are capable of stumbling and falling. The point is that when we're physically, mentally, or spiritually weary, we need that spinach. We need God's strength. And then we see in verse 31 that we should wait on the Lord. Isaiah tells us you will become weary and weak, but if you wait on the Lord, if your hope is in the Lord, you will be strengthened. But, this is a good but, there are some that are not nice, like Maybe some of you guys have had a girl say to you, I think you're a nice guy, but I'm just not that into you. So the but here is if we wait on the Lord, trust in the Lord, put our hope in the Lord, we will be strengthened. So who does our hope need to be in? The Lord. Psalm 20 verse 7 to 8 says this, Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we trust in the name of the Lord, our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. If our hope is in ourselves or other people or things as a source of strength, we will end up greatly disappointed. If we trust in anything else, it will fail. Jesus said, come to me and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you if you want to rest for your soul. It only works if we are under the Lordship of Christ. Our strength will be renewed when our hope is in the Lord. When we're depleted, the Lord's Spirit charges us up again. His Word, it encourages and motivates us to get moving again. His Spirit ministers to us and it revitalizes us. When God works through fellow believers, it sharpens us, it spurs us on, giving us the motivation we need to press on. God never grows tired. He is an endless source of power to renew our strength, even if we need to be renewed a hundred times in one day. Look at what we'll be able to do when we wait on the Lord, when our hope is in the Lord. I love this next pas part of the passage. Uh, we see here it says, soar like an eagle. He could have picked any bird to illustrate his point. So why an eagle? Well, the eagle lives and it retains its strength to a really great age. And they renew their feathers. Your youth is renewed like the eagles, says the psalmist in Psalm 103.5. God renews our strength with his. And then we will run and not grow weary. This made me think of what happened with Elijah, if you remember in the Old Testament. After Elijah had been shown the power of the Lord when he won the altar showdown with the prophets of Baal. He got scared at Jezebel's death threat. What did he do? He took off. But he reached a point where he was weak and weary. 
and he actually wanted to die. But what happened? An angel of the Lord appeared to him with some heavenly food, and Scripture says that he was so strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and nights. When God strengthens us, we will be able to do some pretty amazing things. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. When we have been given godly strength, we can do more than we ever thought possible. And then lastly, we will be able to walk and not grow faint. We have a God who knows everything and a God who can do anything and will give us his spinach, his godly strength when we're weak. As we wait on him, as we wait for his timing and his plans, he will help us to walk continually with him and not grow faint. We are not to look to our own strength, but to God who gives us strength. We need strength to get through the difficult situations, the pandemics, and not lose hope. We need strength to resist temptation. We need strength to deal with persecutions and sufferings. We need strength to continue to do the Lord's work when we feel like giving up. So look to the Lord to give us our spinach, His strength, and we will continue to persevere in His strength and His power. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Would you bow your heads and pray with me at this time? God, we are so thankful for these, this chapter in Isaiah that we could read. We are so thankful for how you encourage us and teach us that we can draw upon you and your strength, Lord, when we are weary and weak. And God, we need your strength. We need your strength to, to live, to work, to proclaim your truth in our world. And so God, may we rely on you May we rely on your strength, on you giving us that spinach that we need, Lord, to get done what you call us to do. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Matt. And thank you once again for inviting us into your homes these Sunday mornings as we go through this strange time of isolation together. May you continue to find your strength and your comfort from God's word. And let me close our service with this benediction based on Isaiah 40. May you, our everlasting God, who is without equal and beyond compare, who sits enthroned, creator of the heavens and the earth, may you grant us your abiding comfort. May you prepare in each of our hearts the way of our Lord Jesus to make straight our wilderness paths, to help us know that your word alone stands forever. And finally, eternal Lord, who never tires, help us find our hope in you in order that we can soar on wings like eagles, run and not grow weary, walk and not become faint as we work to do your will and live for your glory. Amen. God bless and have a great week.